Unfortunately, we have injury updates on Yuri Perez, Josh Lowe, and TJ Friedel up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Monday, March 18th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Chris Towers and... Chris, I'm sorry to do it, man. Let's let's lead things off with Yuri Perez. Reported soreness in his elbow and will undergo further testing over the next few days to determine the severity of the injury. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is he undraftable? Is he undraftable until we find more? Why? Take my elbow instead. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm... At, at the risk of oversimplifying, the move that I made in Roto was to drop him to 277 and in points, 253 in the overall rankings. That is the first pick of the reserve rounds. So, yeah, I mean, look, we don't know anything. We know he has soreness in his right elbow. He's going to visit uh, a, a specialist. I believe it's ominously the same specialist who performed Sandy Alcantara's Tommy John surgery last uh, fall. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, my assumption is the most likely outcome is Yuri Perez is about to have Tommy John surgery because he's 20 years old and he throws 99 miles an hour and we're not allowed to have nice things. Mm -hmm. the, no, it's actually just the pitchers get hurt and he throws really hard. And so, yeah, I'm very concerned that this is going to be a, a long-term injury. I don't think you can't be concerned or you can't not be concerned that, about that right now. So yeah, reserve rounds, maybe a late, late round pick to stash, but my expectations are very low. Let's move over to Josh Lowe, who will begin the season on the IL after being diagnosed with an oblique injury on Sunday. Chris, I know you were already lower, no mm -hmm. pun intended, on Josh Lowe heading into the season. How far down are you moving him now? Uh, yeah, I had him around 100th before this latest injury, and that was moving him back up once he looked like he was progressing toward games. And I think the concern here is obviously that the oblique is related to the hip injury that he was already dealing with and that it's as much of a setback as it is a new injury. Oblique injuries are obviously incredibly tricky for baseball. They tend to linger a lot longer than than even teams will expect. So yeah, it, it's a concern. I'm moving Josh Lowe down to 140-ish in my overall rankings, which might be too low, but he's someone that I already had as a bust. I had a lot of questions about the playing time and the, the, the playing time risk and the performance. So it's just I'm not going to have Josh Lowe on any teams except for the one where I already drafted him. How much time do you think he's going to miss? I just assume that it's going to be the first month of the season. Maybe it's like early to mid May. He's back. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we, we can't say for sure, right? If it, if it's a, a super minor strain, it could be a, a 10 day injury. There were a couple, I think Jorge Soler missed 11 days last year with a, an oblique injury. So it's possible that he's more or less ready for opening day, but because he was already behind schedule with the hip and there were, you know, he was expected to be ready for opening day, but he didn't get the reps in. Now he's not going to get the reps in in all likelihood. I would think you're looking at at least a couple of weeks of the regular season. A month is not an unreasonable expectation. TJ Friedel has a fracture in his wrist and will be reassessed in three to four weeks. This one's a little bit tougher to figure out because he's only being mm -hmm. reassessed a month from now. I, I'm thinking maybe mid to late May, something like that for TJ Friedel. Is he still worth drafting and stashing on the IL? And how excited are you for someone like Will Benson or Jake Fraley? It looks like both of those guys will... Uh, at least be strong side platoons for the Reds. Yeah, I'm moving Friedel down to like the 200 to 20 ish range at outfield or overall, not an outfielder. I would still rather have him than Will Benson and Jake Fraley. I have real questions about the skill sets for really all three of these guys, but Benson, ton of strikeouts, especially. I know he's a very good athlete with some power, but. I just I worry he might be one of those guys who strikes out 35% of the time and, and just can't really hack it. So I I think Fraley and Benson are both interesting late round flyers in a roto league, but I, I'm not moving them up much more than that. I think it could be good news for Jonathan India as well, Chris. How would you yeah. rank India, Friedel, Fraley, and Benson? All four of these Reds players. I have it Friedel, India, Benson, Fraley. Um India, you know, he 
his 162 game pace last year was like 24 homers, 20 steals, 190 runs plus RBI. He was really good. It's just the stolen bases were not there after he came back from the the plantar fasciitis injury over the past, like over the final like two two weeks of the season or whatever it was. Um, he hit really poorly as well. So I just I worry about how much that injury has lingered and the the impact that's going to have on him moving forward. So. India, his ADP is up to like 250 over the last week in NFC NFBC drafts. I think that's a fine cost. I'm not going to move him up any more than that, though. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> 